City, which is really exciting that this awesome film is making its rounds. Um, I'm going to share some poems, talk about some of the work I do, uh, and hopefully uh, what I share as well as what you're about to see inspires you um, not only to have discussions as uh, Leica shared, but also um, to take action. Uh, that's really kind of the piece that I'm going to try and push here. So three months ago, uh, or sorry, three months after Hurricane Maria, uh, the New York Times put out a documentary. Uh, it was a mini doc, and the documentary was called Inside a Suicide Prevention Center in Puerto Rico. The documentary described it as uh, Maria's hidden toll, a mental health crisis that we had never seen before on the island. The center was called Linea Paz. Uh, it was open 24 seven, and they had 12 phone operators working uh, at all times. They said that calls came in that ranged from anything from depression to anxiety to suicide uh, to reliving trauma if it rained a little bit too hard uh, outside of uh, their window. And so this poem I'm about to share uh, has lines from uh, the documentary. Uh, and so I give a trigger warning uh, for suicide. Permission. You have my permission to grieve. If I hear wind, I might think they're on a balcony. How long have you wanted to hurt yourself? We all want to escape, but there is no map. If I hear wind, I might think they're on a balcony. When I say Puerto Rico, I mean an opening in the skin I want to escape from, but there is no map. This type of call is very common. When I say Puerto Rico, I mean an opening in the skin where gold turns green under my scalp. This type of call is very common, Maria, like a buzz saw shaving off the top of the island where gold turns green under my scalp. She says, yo quiero volar, to fly, and she will do it. Like a buzz saw shaving the top half of the sky, this is part of the process. I cannot let you go. Yo quiero volar, to escape, and I will do it if no one can remember my name. This is part of the process. I cannot let you go until you feel like you are suffocating. If no one can remember my name, it means another hurricane has come. I feel like I am suffocating and sometimes I just can't find the words to name another hurricane. I sing, despierta, borinqueño, de ese sueño, but sometimes I just can't recall the words in 119 syllables, despierta, borinqueño, de ese sueño. You have my permission to grieve in 119 syllables. Tell me how long have you wanted to hurt yourself? So that poem is in a poetic form called a pantoum. Uh, the pantoum, uh, if you notice, consistently brings uh, the lines back from the first stanza to the next to the next until it creates a circle. Um, I found that form particularly important for that poem to talk about uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, and to think about how the New York Times called the mental health crisis a hidden toll. We are a year and a month, two months out from when Hurricane Maria and Hurricane Irma hit Puerto Rico, and we still do not fully understand uh, what the hidden tolls are. And so we often have an understanding of disaster as something that happens, and we help, and we continue uh, on with our lives. And so a lot of my work this past year and, and two months and change has been to remind people that uh, this is an ongoing crisis. That there are ways in which we have to continue the conversation and continue to ask ourselves what can we do and start to excavate what are those hidden tolls or the hidden things happening and to understand that the hurricanes was not where this began. Um, that's when the spotlight from uh, the news anchors and social media hit Puerto Rico, but we're talking about a crisis that had la has lasted hundreds uh, of years. And so this poem, uh, I'm really happy to do it here because it's actually inspired by another documentary called The Last Colony, uh, exploring what the, the political um, situation of, of Puerto Rico is. Y'all can, uh, can take a seat, welcome. <laughs> Get it packed. <laughs> the last colony. 
They call you Puerto Rican, child of the proudest people in the world, of the last colony and all its obedient burden, purveyor of Stockholm Syndrome's mantra, 117 years captive of a puppet's false heaven, to believe yourself a real home when it's called the island of enchantment for a reason, Taino. Your compromise with a blasphemous savior. Swallowed a white man's dreaming to nurture a half-breed half gospel, but we have always begged the worst of your magic. The first time your God confused whiteness for divinity here, we killed the preacher. 6,000 bodies later, you called a massacre a miracle, and we have been misguided praise ever since land of the hollowed pride. Nest of strings within. Everything previously pulling apart now beneath the wood of me, living legacy to a pendulum kind of ego. Each swing, a decision between Spanish and English, a choice of the fire we dance our tongues above, and isn't that enough branding? to have colonization grow an intimate thing of your bloodline, have the whole diaspora thinking themselves too lazy to abol abolish the histories tattooed across their skin, the gall of this ownership, to make us boastful of the bleached ankles exchanging our dance, forgetting we taught a weaving of steps to call itself by name, dare a bystander to say salsa, and not mean tomorrow. You will hear pride in this home again today. Call me a young lord sitting atop a paper altar. Fashioned from thousands of FBI surveillance files. How America likes to watch us shift under $73 billion of debt. Crown us crumbling at the shoreline to the Jones Act. Can't even speak trade without pleading for open borders. What an island to fear its own ocean. And you question why I care for a place I didn't grow up in. Blame this boundless horizon. Dawning from a Boricua's promise to the rhythm, these people who worship an abuela's will to conquer anything short of a coquille siren. No life is the last mystery we dance to, eat to, praise to, to hear your family say you didn't grow up pro-Puerto Rican. In the same breath, they swear everyone wants to be us, us. When black friends call you out of your ethnicity, and other Latinos say, at least I have a country to be proud of. Pride is the fickle birth of stars. To know someone at some point praised a piece of time you couldn't even see yet, and it is here that I demand independencia. Porque yo soy boricua, pa que tú lo sepa. So you know that this is pride. So, uh, as I shared uh, in, that, in the poem and as was shared earlier, I'm a Puerto Rican from the Bronx. Uh, I'm a touring spoken word poet. I go across the country talking about um, Latinx identity, uh, what it means to be um, Puerto Rican third generation, but also what it means to take action and be a part of that movement. And so, um, an amazing, amazing poet named Willy Perlomo. Uh, one of the fathers of the New Eurekan poetry movement, uh, started an organization last year called Hashtag Poets for Puerto Rico. Uh, and it was a simple thing that he did. Uh, he sat down and he looked himself in the mirror and he asked himself a question. Uh, he said, what am I good at? And how can I use it to help? And so he said, I'm pretty good at this poetry stuff. Uh, he knows a lot of people, has a lot of networks, and so he, he organized the first hashtag Poets for Puerto Rico reading. Basically, he brought 30 poets together. He said, hey, can you read for free? Can you donate your books? We'll charge $10 at the door, and everybody who comes in, all that money we get, we'll send to a grassroots organization in Puerto Rico. Uh, the first one he did was uh, about like 20, 30 blocks from here. Uh, I'm happy to say that we've had 11 shows since that show last year across the country from California to Chicago to Louisiana uh, to DC, Philly, um, and New York again. Uh, and I'm very grateful that myself and another poet, Denise Froman, are co-organizing that movement. And I say that to say that if you can do anything for me, it is to ask yourself that question. Because there's too much injustice going on in the world for us not to sit down and ask what are our skills. And there's too much happening in Puerto Rico, both the hidden tolls and the things that we know happening beyond the hurricanes to not ask ourselves, what is my talent? And I hope you don't think I just mean creative, because Puerto Rico needs doctors and lawyers and teachers. Anybody with a creative profession 
in a non-creative profession that can offer their time and their resources and their knowledge base to the island. Because I've been seeing hashtag all these different uh, insert here jobs for Puerto Rico, from poets, again, to teachers, to doctors, to lawyers. And so I hope that you can ask yourself that question in the same way that Willie asked that question, in the same way that I try every day to ask myself that question. How can I give back? How can I help? And how can I be a part of that? Uh, the numbers right now are saying that it's going to take five to seven years for Puerto Rico to get back to where it was. We don't want it to go back to where it was. So it's an even bigger challenge of asking ourselves, how can we reimagine where Puerto Rico can be? A stronger Puerto Rico, a better Puerto Rico. One where this, these things, these atrocities, this oppression cannot happen. And so this is my last poem. Uh, I love this poem because it uh, showcases my favorite word ever. My favorite word is huepa. <laughs> We're going to try that together. Uh, I'll tell you right now the reason why I love the word huepa is because huepa has two definitions. The first one, uh, if you don't know, it sounds like some of y'all know huepa. Uh, so huepa has two definitions. The first one is if you're celebrating, so you might walk into the party and this party is lit and everybody's having fun and they're dancing and somebody has a, co a corona in their hand and you're like, huepa! The party is awesome. But then, shout out to my abuela, huepa is also when you make a mistake, such as when I'm walking uh, past uh, my grandmother in the living room and I drop all my food on the floor and she's like, huepa. <laughs> Which is if you saw the head nod, it means dumbass. Uh, but uh, as a writer, I became obsessed with the word huepa, huepa because it simultaneously means both to celebrate and to acknowledge mistakes. And so if we are gonna try to move forward with how we think about Puerto Rico and how we understand the island's troubles and how we try to support um, a reimagining of where it can go, we have to understand that we both have to celebrate all the beauty that there is as well as acknowledging the mistakes that have happened. And so this poem uh, is a testament to that. The scientists say the closest living ethnicity to the perfect human being is Puerto Rican. Well, mi mommy says, don't tell me something I already know. And mi mommy with one hand says, no me diga. And with the other calls los tios y la tias and I told los primo and we screamed, wepa! Forgetting that word can mean either someone made a mistake or it's time to celebrate what a word, to pull itself in two different directions a branch to the sky and a root to the earth. Are we always trying to bridge impossible history and everyone wonders why Puerto Ricans never let you forget that they are Puerto Rican. You ever feel the tombstones break open in your stomach and your ancestors' words climb out as if you've been digesting 206 bones for centuries, but, but I don't say that. I say, vete pa'l carajo, because that's how we said we were perfect before science figured it out. The last time science gave us anything, it was a eugenics masquerade, a celebration of mistakes. Puerto Rican babies thrown in the sky, their mothers scrubbing red confetti off the dance floor a century later. They want to tell us we are the nearest neighbors to the perfect genetic makeup. Wepa, for the word that taught my people to celebrate in the darkest roots of mistakes. Wepa, for every time a stranger asks, no, where are you really from? <laughs> Say colonization made a mistake, but oh papi, you can celebrate all of this anyway. Wepa, for the African diaspora, for the Afro-Latino, for the black Boricua, for my classrooms in South Africa were purposefully shattered Bibles. The way the words Latino and colored were just cross words to hang a stranger's God upon, and I don't want whatever resurrected that day, this day. My God exists for when strangers say, isn't Ancestry.com enough? No. We have family trees, plural. So the Teiba tree and the poplar tree are two lovers who lost each other across the ocean for so long. Strangers had to tell them what became of their children and everyone wonders why our feet speak spiritual that is Espiritu Santo, all chained up for the day we left El Campo. My father calls it Puerto Rico's progress, chap lips for the colonizer savior complex, salivating over boats, Bibles, and goddamn science. The reason I carry my ancestors' tombstones in my belly and let each bone fly like a 
campesinos machete. Every poem about Puerto Rico is false tongue confetti. A failed God metaphor to make your white Jesus's heart feel heavy. How I must perform my heaven. While yours is perfect with no science to prove it, you ever feel strangers break you open. Tell you the inside is perfection and the outside is no God at all, but, but I don't say that. I say wepa. I say yokahu. I say praise. Praise this. Thank you so much. Guys.